Hello, today I'd like to show you a little bit about some English paper piecing, um, a fairly traditional form of patchwork and it's usually done by hand and so I'm going to show you the hand method today. I'm not really a hand worker, I'm a machine worker. Hand work's often a little bit slow for me um, and perhaps a little bit painstaking. Um, but I just thought, it's many of us go out and about, we travel a lot these days or perhaps we're part of a sewing group where we find that it's more convenient to have a hand project. And this is something that you can always have at the ready just to grab in a little bag or container when you go out and it's just there ready to go. Sometimes I'm waiting in the car for various people while there's appointments happening and I find I can sit and do this in the car. So I'm just going to show you initially I've got some fabric hexagons. Now I've cut mine out beautifully cut I must say but I'm fortunate I have a die cutting machine and I've cut them on that and I've got my papers. Now my hexagons fabric hexagons are slightly larger than my papers because I need to be able to turn that over. Now the paper I've used is fairly, um, it's a stiff paper It's or a very lightweight card. It's, it's quite uh, pliable. You don't want it to be too light because you need to be able to fold your fabric over the paper. It kind of needs to have something to fold to. If it's too heavy, it's too hard to work with. So um, these papers are really good. Now I mentioned that I have die cut my hexagon fabrics. They don't actually even have to start off as hexagons. You might have some squares or random shapes. As long as what you've got in the way of your paper is fairly accurate, you'll find that you can flip over all sorts of shapes as long as it flips over. So I'm going to show you initially we have to prepare them all so that they're on papers uh, like that to sew. So with the hexagon, the paper hexagon, now there's a couple of ways of doing this. You can get a glue stick, a little fabric glue stick, which is ideal for this purpose. I'm just going to place the hexagon on the fabric because the, the glue is fairly quick drying so you don't want to be taking too long over doing this part of it and I would just pop a little bit of glue along I probably just do three sides and then I'll flip that over and just just by hand flip that and then turn it and then press it down into that glue and then turn it and that glue is drying already this glue dries clear and you can see that it's disappearing already. So that's why I've just done the three sides at a time. So then I'll come and do the next three sides. And I'm just going to flip that over there, let that stick onto the glue. This makes it really quick and easy, very portable. Don't need to have a needle to do this if you've got a glue stick. Now you could, if you wanted to, press them now that they're set in there. You can iron paper without any trouble and that's as, as simple as it is in the way of preparation. Now perhaps you don't have a glue stick or you don't want to use one for some reason. The more traditional way would have been to sew those shapes on. So I'll just quickly show you how to do that because that might be your preference. So I've got a needle and thread ready to go here. I hope. So I've just folded over one side at the moment. And I'm just going to go right through the paper and everything. And this is just tacking this on. This is not a, meant to be a pristine sort of sewing. And I'm going to fold over the next corner. So when, you, when you're at the corner, press that, finger press that through and then flip that over so that you get a nice point at the corner. And then I'm just going to go down into that corner and I'm going to come back up again there. And that just holds the corner in place nicely. So you can see this is a very rough type of sewing, it's just a tacking. This will be coming out later, so you don't want to make your stitches too small. So somewhere in the middle there. Again, finger press that over, flip your corner over, bring your needle back up through there, through the corner that you folded over, and back down somewhere nearby. And keep going all the way around your shape. So if you're taking this around with you it's quite helpful to have a little board perhaps to lean on um, if you're not going to be sitting at a table. So we just do this corner. So you can see this isn't quite as quick as the glue stick but it may be better for whatever it is that you're doing. Now, because I'm not a hand sewer, as I said, I don't normally 
choose to do these sorts of projects but I have found that it's been amazingly useful to have something like this with me when I'm traveling or I, I am part of a small sewing group and we meet in each other's homes and it's not always convenient for whatever reason to take the sewing machine um, and I've always got this in a little pouch ready to go so every time I go out the door it comes with me just in case I get time where I need to sit and occupy my hands so I come right round to the other to the other end now and I'm just going to do a, a couple of quick stitches there just to hold that I don't need to particularly tie it off because as I said it's just a temporary basting that will be coming out later on so now you can see that I've got either my glued version or my stitch version and basically they look much the same so then when you're going to sew them together there's various different ways of doing it you might do completely random placement with your hexagons and I've got a few ready done here you might just go these are some delicious Japanese fabrics that I've got um, but any number of fabrics is a great way of using up um, leftovers and and scraps and various things you might make these little rosettes this is a fairly traditional layout called commonly known I think as grandmother's flower garden or there's anything that you can do that you can think of really that you can do with these is a great idea now the papers are only temporary they will come out later when you've sewn all your he hexagons together and I'll perhaps I'll quickly show you how you would do that again with your needle and thread to sew them together you would just place them back to back and sew along with a little over stitch so I've got two hexagons here right sides together and I'm going to bring my needle I've popped a little knot in there I'm going to bring it up out at one of the corners and now I'm just going to do a little overcasting stitch so you're just catching the very edge of your fabric it's not a great big stitch and because you've got that paper in there you'll find that it's a nice little edge and if you just grab a couple of the threads on that edge that works really well you don't want to be taking it right through the paper because that would be jolly hard work I must say but you do need to make sure you do catch some of the fabric so just a little overcasting stitch all the way along there works really well so fairly fairly close together because this is what's going to be holding the, the fabrics together you don't want it all falling apart because the stitches are too far apart so today I'm just going to show you how to prepare and how to sew them together I'm going to let you decide what you do with them but another day I might show you some other possibilities um, I have made a nice little bag using these hexagons which I'll show you in just a minute so I'm just about at the end now and you can see that I've overcast that side when I open that out that's nicely sewn together that's going to hold together well and because the papers are in it and because the paper is quite malleable when I go to sew something in there for instance I might do that edge first and then I might need to come up and do this edge so that on there because you can bend it all that'll all bend around and everything so I have mentioned that the papers don't stay in forever they're a temporary thing for while you're sewing it because it holds the shape nicely it allows the accuracy that you need to sew six sides together but um, beyond that once you've surrounded a hexagon like if you've done one of these little rosettes when that middle one is completely sewn in you can pull that paper out so if you've just used this temporary glue it'll just unstick or if you've used your tacking stitches like I did on that hexagon there you can just pull those out and pull the papers out and you can reuse those papers it's not a single use very often you can use them again I'll just quickly show you what it is that I use when I'm cutting my little hexagons around I've got myself this delightful little suitcase which I'm sure takes me back to my kindergarten days I had one of those when I went to kindergarten and in there I keep my hex my papers my glue stick my scissors needle and thread and my hexagons and because I've got the little case if I'm sitting in the car or something I can actually sit and I can do my gluing and whatever on this little surface I find that very handy sometimes the case isn't so practical and you need a softer bag so here I've made the softer bag out of the hexagons I'll show you that so this is a, a very cute little bag 
it's kind of triangular in shape and I've done that by using some of these hexagons into this sort of shape for the base and I've actually popped some diamonds in to bring that shape up but it's really just a little drawstring bag and I've got hexagons just randomly placed to make the sides and just some little drawstrings in the top and that I think is a really cute bag it's a great take-along bag and I have actually done a pattern for that bag it's available on my website gourmetquilter.com to purchase and download and as you can see on there I've got a picture of the bag and how to do it and on the reverse side of the pattern or probably on page two when you've downloaded it there's your shapes for tracing and for the base and for the lining and things like that so the hexagons can be so much fun as I said even if you're not a hand sewer they were they're a great take-along project I find them particularly helpful when I'm traveling just so that I feel I'm getting something done because I like to be doing something pretty much all the time thank you